talking about India, 75 years of independence we complete this year, do we somehow underestimate the importance of how India has managed these 75 years? Because when it became independent, there were a lot of predictions that the country will break up, the country will not survive. Do we not give enough credit to our own legacy and how we have held together as a country for so long? There are many achievements to be proud of. Uh, first of all, uh, making uh, a viable nation uh, out of uh, so much diversity. You're absolutely right that in the 1950s and 1960s, uh, there were all these you know, Western observers who were doomsday prophets. Uh, they felt that uh, India could not uh, survive altogether as a country. Uh, why? Because it was simply too big, uh, too diverse and too poor. And uh, we proved them wrong. Um, India is uh, very much um, a successful nation state. Uh, of course, our other big achievement not so much on the front of economic development, where progress in eradicating poverty, um, inequalities of various sorts has been slow and halting at best. But the other you know, great area of achievement is, of course, uh, constructing and maintaining a functioning democracy. Freedom of expression is the hallmark of democracies. And it is the essential characteristic that distinguishes democracies, however flawed they may be otherwise, from autocracies, from dictatorships, authoritarian regimes of various kinds. So freedom of expression is not just a precious value in itself, but it's also something that is essential to a democratic society and a democratic polity. And like many of our other cherished democratic values, um, like multi-partyism, like uh, federalism. Um, it seems to me that freedom of expression is under threat in India today, not because of uh, any problem in the society, but because of uh, abuse of state power. So this was a very um, timely discussion. Um, I hope that uh, the trend towards growing authoritarianism or creeping authoritarianism, um, as I called it in the discussion, will be checked and reversed. Um, I did say on the panel that uh, even though it's difficult to be optimistic, all is not lost, but it will be a hard struggle to salvage India's democracy from the predicament it finds itself in. Uh, if we fail in that, then I think um, our twin proud achievements of being a successful nation state and of being a successful functioning democracy will be largely negated. So I hope it doesn't happen. Today a lot of labels get thrown around while describing India. Electoral auto autocracy, on the verge of fascism, ethnic nationalism, all of these. Which of these labels do you think is most accurate? I mean you mentioned creeping authoritarianism yourself. Could you contextualize that in, in the light of ethnic identities? Because it seems somewhere down the line that ethnic identity nowadays is taking precedence over national identity. And somewhere down the line that is being created to, to flare up certain emotions that have a political impact, that have an electoral impact. So how, how do you see the ethnic identity of India evolving in the political context of today? Um, the Indian political scientist um, Rajni Kothari who has passed away many years ago now, but he was India's uh, pioneering political scientist, um, once said that democracy is a game of numbers. Um, when stripped down to its uh, electoral essentials. And the fact is that the Hindus comprise the majority in this country. Um, well, um, that's where the the current predicament of Indian democracy comes from, from a very determined and partially successful attempt to mobilize that quote-unquote you know, majority um, and uh, uh, make uh, uh, democracy into simply a game of numbers. But you know, I would like to underline that the danger from this turn that our polity has taken um, is not only to Muslims, 
who are the main religious minority and obviously the prime target of this kind of uh, majoritarian politics or to other religious minorities like Christians and so on. But uh, the greatest danger is in fact to the majority itself. People who are not Muslims or Christians uh, but who would identify or at least be census classified as Hindus. Uh, because what majoritarian tyranny leads to is a descent into authoritarianism. Um, the stifling of all the basic freedoms that we hold dear and have largely taken for granted, uh, at least we who are part of the elite have taken for granted over the last seven decades. So if this trend, this majoritarian trend is not checked, uh, we will lose um, practically all the freedoms that we hold dear and have largely taken for granted. And the losers will not just be Muslims or Christians or other religious minorities. The, the result will be the country as a whole.